song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ of Russellville, Kentucky. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock and Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow we're going to be meeting at 689 North Main Street, as always. And if you're familiar with Russellville, you know our building is located next to Kentucky Fried Chicken. So come down and be with us. Bring your Bibles. Let's study God's Word together. If you don't have a Bible, we'll be happy to provide one for you. But bring the family, bring the children. We have classes for all ages, and uh, your children will be taught God's Word. And so we hope that you will be encouraged by uh, the lessons that will be brought And um, we hope that you will take advantage to study with us personally. If maybe at some point throughout the week you would like to uh, have a Bible study or have some Bible questions, uh, let us know. We'd be happy to meet with you at our homes, your homes, somewhere in town, just at the church building uh, would be a good place. And so um, we could sit down and talk about God's Word. We can have a meeting on a computer like Zoom or, of course, an old-fashioned phone call. So uh, whatever uh, means by which you would like to ask questions, please send those to us. You can email us, northsidechurchofchrist at hotmail.com. Or you can go to the internet and just look us up, Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky, and you can find our website, which has links to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is actually showing a video version of this program right now, so you can go there and Uh, check it out at your convenience, as well as any of our past programs as well. While you turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 30, we want to introduce once again, Nick Greenman. Nick, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Chris, and uh, it's good to be back. And and of course, uh, we we had some storms this week. Hope everybody in the listening area has uh, done well and and recovered well. If if you, you guys will be in our prayers if you need it. And uh, we had some hail up here in Butler County. Um, I know it got pretty pretty heavy at some points. Uh, at my house particularly, it wasn't that that bad. I had like maybe one or two um, stones pelt my carport outside, but n- nothing that I would uh, cry s- severe or anything. But up towards the church building, it did get uh, pummeled pretty good, and I hear y'all had some uh, pretty heavy storms down in Clarksville, so I'm glad that you and your family are safe, Chris, and and so, yeah, there's a lot of prayers that need to go out. There's a lot of uh, rebuilding, and and, uh, and so uh, let us know if you need our prayers and and uh, whatever we can do to help out as individuals. We'd be happy to do that if we can, but if you are wanting to come out to services, uh, certainly, uh, you know, if you're in the Rustville area, you know, go to where Chris uh, gave that those, those those locations a few, a few minutes ago, and um, and then of course at in Butler County, that's thirty six twenty eight Lovely Road is where I preach, and that's a Christian Home Church of Christ. We meet at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, and five o'clock on Sundays, and midweek Bible studies Wednesdays at seven. And so that's uh, many opportunities for you to study the Bible. Love to get to know you. And, and of course, we are in Proverbs chapter 30. We're almost done, almost done with the book of Proverbs yeah. 30 and 31. That's it. Uh, so Proverbs 30, this, these are the words of Agur, the son of Jacob. And so the, a different fellow uh, from Solomon. And so yeah. it's, it's a very unique chapter here. Uh, and some of the things that, that was uh, one of my favorite Proverbs is found in this particular chapter. So I'm looking forward to today's study. Hope you guys are too. And and Chris, uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, when we think about Proverbs 30, of course, as you said, we're getting near the end of our study. And uh, for some people, it might be like, finally. Uh, hmm. For others like us, you're like, hmm, too bad there isn't more. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to go to Psalms and do one a week uh, for the next <laughs> hundred and something times. But uh, we are going to finish up Proverbs 30 here in the next week or so, and or Proverbs as a whole, and then go on to some other things. So uh, if you have any suggestions about studies or things that you would like to hear, again, send those questions to us, and we'll be happy to answer those on these programs. One of the things I see in Proverbs 30, I guess, is um, centers around the character of a man. Um, Of course, as you already mentioned in verse one, the sons of Agur, um, or the sons, pardon me, the words of Agur um, is the first thing that's being said here. So we know the, um, the, the 
the author, or we don't know who actually penned it, but these are coming from the words of a man who he was exactly is up for debate. Um, no one really knows. Uh, but um, I think there's a couple things here that we need to focus on in regard to the fact that uh, it's not really about who he is, but it's about the message that he brings. And certainly it's in uh, like manner with many of the things that Solomon and others, uh, you know, revealed through the book of Proverbs. And we'll see the same thing when we get to Proverbs 31. But what we find here is lessons about the character of a man, which is what we've been studying all this time. Uh, there's a f several points that I think that we need to focus on. And, and one is that we are created to be wiser than all other created beings. Um, yet we can learn from those. We can learn from the animal kingdom as we studied a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll be down in verse 24 in just a little while to talk about the, what we might consider the, uh, seems to be the less important, you know, of, of, um, of beings yet they serve a purpose and they have, uh, they have ways of providing ways of protection. Uh, overall, the message is avoid foolishness, ungodliness, be satisfied with the Lord's goodness, you know, and not your own. Uh, don't be greedy. Don't claim innocence when you're involved in sin. So these are some of the lessons that I think that we're going to see here. And I don't know, maybe I'm reading between the lines. I look at verse one, the words of Agur, the son of Jacka, uh, his utterance. Um, this man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukau. So pardon me if I don't pronounce those names just right. Uh, very unique names. Um, but, you know, down in verse 7, I don't know. He just, to me, kind of gives an ind indication that maybe, you know, maybe these are the parting words of a man uh, to his uh, friends or maybe his sons. Um, it, but it, like I said, it's not about who, it's about the message and the character of the man who spoke these things and what message he's trying to leave behind and right out of the gate the first thing he says is surely i am more stupid than any man <laughs> now we laugh about that you know because it's typically a term that we don't use a lot in our common language except to offend somebody <laughs> but but here's a man that says you know i don't i don't even have the understanding of a man now, you know, what does he mean by that? What are the possible explanations that we, he would have starting in something like this? And probably, you know, something that, and I'm going to give about three different ones here. So you might have some different views on this, uh, Nick. But um, the first one, that, you know, could possibly be, and I think what a lot of people would like to see is just, you know, a humility and self-awareness. And, and that's certainly my first impression, especially when you start launching into godliness and the importance of God and his knowledge uh, you know, by comparison. So in a way, number two, it's like lifting up God, but I also read a, a third, you know, remark that somebody had commented on. And, um, he said, you know, it could be a defense in answering someone who's questioning Agar's competency or his knowledge or his state as maybe an older man. And, um, it, it, is it said sarcastically, you know, I don't really lean to you know, thinking it's like that, but certainly there's a comparison to be made there, especially in our day and age, when we can relate to the fact that people are constantly questioning us about our belief in God. And, and we just want to look at them and say, look, we're not, we're not stupid here. We love the Lord. We have a faith that obviously you do not have, especially when you're addressing an atheist or somebody that wants to change God's will all the time. Uh, we have a trust in God's will. We have a tr trust in the source material. So as the Bible teaches us, we don't lean on our own understanding. This goes back to Proverbs 3. We don't direct our own path. We let the Lord do such a thing. And by comparison, you know, we're not elevating ourselves to the level of God's knowledge. Yet we'll see throughout the course of this lesson that uh, our wisdom comes from God. So those are just some of my initial thoughts here. Um, let, let me share a couple other things. Looking at some other translations, like the King James Version. I was reading from the New King James, but the King James Version says, Surely I'm more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. Uh, the New Living Translation says, I am too stupid to be a human, and I lack common sense. Uh, it's a little bit more on the nose, you might say. But the ESV 
says, surely I'm too stupid to be a man. I have not the understanding of a man. Something that I kind of gather by putting those views, you know, translations all together is, you know, as men or as the human race is what we're talking about here, humanity, we need to understand that we're not created by God to behave stupidly. We're not created by God to be foolish, be or to use our senses that he has created in us. We are to use our minds and we are to use our spirit for godly wisdom. That's what this whole book has been about. And so to behave like a, a brutish beast, and that's brought up sometimes in scripture, that's unacceptable for the human race. We should know better. We should behave better. We are on a different level and a different plane than the animal kingdom where, where there are things that we can learn from the animal kingdom. We have a soul and we have an eternal responsibility in our relationship with God. So we're to live by a higher standard of understanding. And that's, that's just kind of what I get overall uh, in, in chapter 30. Well, Nick, I've talked enough. What are some of your mm -hmm. thoughts? Well, let me ask a question. Um, I mean, I, I think humility is certainly the, the catalyst here, but the question is, is he humbling himself or was he made humble? And to, to echo these words, uh, just like Job, he says it uh, in Job 42, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You ask, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said, I will question you and you shall answer me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. So, I mean, if we were to take the statement that uh, Agur is saying here, he says, I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Well, we know that he is uh, talking um, uh, hy hyperbolic, I guess you could say. Uh, he's, he's exaggerating here a little bit um, because he'll go down in verse five. He says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and and you be found a liar. Uh, and I'm wondering if if Agar had to get chastised a little bit by the Lord, and he realized he realized uh, that uh, he's he's not worthy to be a man because he has not been faithful to God, and God had to chastise him. And now he is realizing, I don't know the wisdom of God. I don't know God. I he, you know I've got to figure out who God is and stop speaking presumptuously. That, that's kind of my take. Who is, of course, well, that's that a good too. take. Well, who's the prophet who uh, who said, you know, we 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 need to repent, um, you know, for a nation, uh, you know, speaking on behalf. I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, was it Ezekiel or Isaiah? Uh, well, they they all have the the repentance uh, commands, but in uh, yeah. Second Chronicles 14. Uh, you know, if my nation, if the nation repents, you know, then, then they'll be restored kind of thing. You, you've got well, that there's there, one but... in particular that just really came out and said, you know, we have sinned and, and took on responsibility for a sinful people, oh, even though we don't see Daniel, evidence. Daniel chapter nine. That was Daniel. Yeah. Daniel okay. chapter nine. Yeah. <laughs> should, have, should have kept that to, in memory then, but, but <laughs> to, just to make that statement, you know, of a man yeah. that we don't personally look at as being sinful in and of himself. He takes on this responsibility for humankind and say, look, mm -hmm. and we use that terminology. I mean, we, we yeah. stand up and preach. We say, look what we have done as a people. But yeah. yet so, a lot of us personally haven't done those things. Yeah. Daniel 9, uh, verse 4 says, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments, we have sinned. And committed iniquity, we have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Um, so that's Daniel nine. Okay. I, I don't know if that's the specific one you're looking for or not, but uh, not good enough. Yeah, yeah that's. What I, I think there may have been mind. another or two, but you know that, that's mm -hmm. that's another attitude I see here in Agar and yeah. what he's saying. Um, you know, and and again, it gets back to an overall understanding of what our place as human beings should be mm -hmm. humble in the sight of God, certainly, but we have responsibility in this world. It's mm -hmm. not arrogance 
to say that we are in this world at the top of the food chain, you might say. I mean, mm. we have a responsibility like Adam did when God created him. He put him in the garden and said, you take care of this garden. You have basically charge over the animals. He said, you ought to name these things. And there was, uh, again, no help meat suitable found in all the earth mm -hmm. uh, to, to partner with Adam. And then God created woman for that purpose. He created another human being, um, you know, same you know, makeup, same soul, same responsibilities toward God. You see, now we all fulfill different roles, obviously. Uh, that's not the context of what we're talking about here. But when he says in verse 3, I neither learn wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One, you know, that's something God said all through the Old Testament. I mean, look at Isaiah 55. You know, he said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my way, says the Lord. And what he's saying here is that we haven't, you haven't behaved in the way that I've revealed to you. Because he's not saying it's impossible to obtain these things. He revealed himself. Granted, he'll always know more than we do, but we can know everything that he reveals. That's our responsibility. That's our duty because we've been charged and committed with the word of God. There's no other creature on earth that can do that. And so we have a responsibility to praise God. Yeah, his knowledge, you know, our knowledge can't compare to God's knowledge. We, we, we know that. And then he goes through these series of questions, much like Job does, as you already mentioned. Um, you know, and even Nebuchadnezzar came to mind when you were talking. You know, here's a guy that had to be humbled. Going back to, you know, the reference that you made and the fact that here's a man that, you know, maybe he had to be humbled. Again, those are various scenarios that I think we can all relate to because at some point in life, we kind of go through any one of those types of stages. Verse 4 says, who has ascended into heaven or descended, who has gathered in the wind his fist, who has bound the waters in the garment, who shall establish all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? If you know, some versions say, surely, you know. And so the point is, is that this is the works of God. It is a prophetic of Jesus coming along? You know, uh, it might be a bit of a stretch to get into a big discussion about that, but obviously Agar knows that there's a plan of God and works mm -hmm. that he's not privy to. There are things about God that we don't know, that maybe we don't have any business of knowing. So we don't need to be caught up with that kind of thing. Like uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed belong to us and the generations. We have a responsibility toward those things. So one cannot know as much as God, but you know, it's, it's definitely reminiscent, uh, reminiscent of Job's discussion with God in Job chapter 38. Then we get to my favorite verse out of here, Chris, uh, verse, uh, Verse seven, it says, two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Um, you know, contentment is certainly an important lesson to be learned. Uh, not, uh, but being, uh, but having just what you need is is a powerful comfort right so if you're not if you have too much in, in prosperity you're going to be blinded all right and, and we see that taking place every day here in the united states the prosperity is blinding people to the fact that they really need god right. um but those who are poverty stricken they they are reduced to doing things that uh, could be uh sinful uh, just to try to make ends meet from time to time right so it you know, whether it's stealing or, you know, I know that's how a lot of people will justify prostitution and stuff like that. So, I mean, re regardless, right. If we, uh, if we could just have just our basic needs met, uh, have just enough and, you know, how comforting is it? Uh, and, and, and at peace that that would be. And so sometimes we need to learn to be content. And, and this is a very powerful verse about contentment, uh, in regards yeah. to, not pursuing the riches of this world and and so it's for me it's it's one of my favorite verses because he actually voices both sides of it he says don't let me be poor and don't let me be rich let me just have what i need <laughs> and and i think that there's a lot of wisdom in that uh, well, i think there's no shame that. yeah i think we see that in the state of the people in the book of malachi 
Um, you know, the fact that here are people that's like, Hey, we're fine. We're, our bellies are full. You know, we have nice homes, everything's good. So we must be doing good. That's yeah. how a lot of people judge their relationship with God. And I love what verse nine says, which you discussed, lest I be full and deny you. How many times have people denied the Lord because, Hey, I'm good. And then how many times they come crawling back to God because they found they're not good enough. And let me just say this. I don't want to disparage anybody from crawling back to God. You need to. Mm. Hey, I've done that. I, I can speak on these things because I've done that. I've had to get on my hands and knees and bow to God in times when I thought, you know, I thought everything was good. Come to realize no, no, I needed to humble myself before God. And even in maybe mostly in times of prosperity, don't forget who you need to thank for that. Mm -hmm. Because when our bellies are full, sometimes we tend to deny what God is trying to really offer us. Jesus taught lessons about that regarding the bread of life. And so, yeah, read Malachi. Look at the state of the people. Mm -hmm. Things seem fine, but they were not. Yeah. Well, time has really gotten away from us, Nick, and I think it might be uh, fruitful for us to divide this lesson up into two uh, sections. So next week, uh, we'll continue our thoughts from verses 10 and following, and uh, then prepare ourselves for a good study of Proverbs 31, which that'll take us to the end of May, maybe the beginning of June, so that we can cover these last two chapters uh, thoroughly, because uh, there's a lot of great things here. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about the uh, the generations, um, you know, that's pure in its own eyes. You know, the leech has two daughters, give and give. I mean, mm -hmm. that's something you've heard before. What does that mean? And uh, there's some things about, you know, the mother and the father. And, uh, you know, we have Mother's Day coming up. It's a secular holiday, obviously. I won't give a Mother's Day lesson tomorrow. Sometimes I do every few years, but, um, you know, it's it's a responsibility we all have uh, toward toward our mothers, certainly a uh, mother's responsibility toward her children and you want to be a godly uh, person in so doing. So yeah, uh, get dressed up, come down, let's worship God together. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about John chapter three and uh, I think you'll enjoy that study. But uh, we have Proverbs 31 to get to and there's a lot of great things there. So we might be extending these lessons into probably the first of June. Um, uh, we're about here in the middle of May. Can you believe that? But uh as we wrap up these studies in Proverbs, I think you'll be encouraged by them. So give us time to get through some of this material. And uh, Nick, any last thoughts before we uh, wrap up our program today? Just happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> well, now you, you still have to send a card. <laughs> <laughs> Buy some flowers. Flowers, chocolates, whatever. You know, I will be preaching on uh, how mothers are a gift tomorrow. That will be my sermon topic in the morning. And then biblical femininity for tomorrow night. All right, important, important lessons. And um, all right, well, good to be with everyone today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been redeemed, spirits, I have been redeemed. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, spirits, I have been redeemed. I will glory in my Savior's name.